we thank you. We bless you and we praise you on this day. This is the day that you have made in your word says that we ought to rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. It didn't say if the day was perfect, God. It didn't say if everything was going well, God. It didn't say what the day looked like, God. It just said to rejoice and be glad, oh God. And so today, Father, we rejoice, oh God, in spite of heartache. And we rejoice, God, in spite of pain, God. We, we rejoice, oh God, in spite of transitions, oh God. We rejoice in spite of where we find ourselves. Because, God, we know that you are with us. Because of that, God, we just rejoice. Now before your presence now, oh God, asking that you would wash us and cleanse us. Cover us, oh God, by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, your word says that we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. So today, God, we come confessing unto you that we haven't always gotten it right, oh God. In fact, even this morning, oh God, we missed the mark. We failed you, oh God. We pray your forgiveness now, oh God. God, I pray that you would empty me of me and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Hide me behind thine old rugged cross. And people see none of me, and they see all of me. Thank God we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart are acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, our strength our most precious redeemer and the church all said amen 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 get your bibles get your bibles turn to genesis 22nd chapter of genesis genesis the 22nd chapter we'll be reading verses 1 through 3 Amen, amen, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. In fact, the song said, I'm glad to be in his service. I'm glad to be in his service. I'm, I'm glad to be in his service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. But I'm glad to be in his service one more time. Oh, I'm glad. In his service one more, one more time. The 22nd chapter of Genesis will be in verses 1 through 3. As is our custom, those that are able, won't you stand as we honor God through the reading of his word? All those that are able, won't you stand as we honor God through the reading of his word? Amen. Amen. When you find it, say amen. 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 Verse 1 says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Verse 3 says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Amen. You may be seated this morning as we meditate today on a thought of radical faith. Conquering contradictions. Radical faith conquering contradictions. Radical faith conquering contradictions. Or for a subtext or title, thank God for interruptions. Thank God for interruptions. Thank God for interruptions. My sisters and my brothers, interruptions in life are bound to happen. And I would suggest to you on today that, that your response to the interruption is probably dictated by where you are in life. 
And here it is. You would love for God to, to interrupt or to break in on you when life is going bad. Amen. When you ain't got enough money to pay the shut off notice from Mexico and, and they give you 24 hours to come up with the cash, you probably cry and father, send an interruption. When my loved one's health situation is so dire that the doctor tell me you ought to pray, you probably cry and father, send an interruption. When I was in college, Sister Crystal, and my student loans didn't come through, and I was about to get kicked off of campus and out of my dorm room because I didn't grow up rich and I don't didn't have enough money, hallelujah, or anybody that I could call on to help me pay my, my bills so I can stay enrolled in class. I cried out, Father, send an interruption. When I, when I got to be at work, when you got to be at work at 8 a.m. and because of car issues in the past, you're down to your last tardy. Hallelujah. You got one more time before you show up late and then you're fired from your job. And now it's 7.30 and your car ain't acting right. And for somebody in that situation, you're saying, Lord, send an interruption. There are times and moments in our lives where, where we want God to send an interruption. But then there are other times in our lives where we wish that the interruption would just go away. Here it is when you, hallelujah, at home and, and you got a brand new baby and you just were able to get the baby to sleep and now you're going to spend some quality time with your boo and then all of a sudden the baby start crying again. Hallelujah. And you say, just five minutes, right? He can stay in there. Hallelujah. You don't want those interruptions to happen when things are going well and we have peace within and peace with our neighbors and peace on our child and peace or in our family and we finally get to a place where we're living my best life and God then sends an interruption in the midst of my living my life like it's golden God sends an interruption and if you've ever experienced an interruption from God in the midst hallelujah of you trying and living your best life then you can understand where Abraham is in the text today. Abraham helps us to understand what you do when the purpose of God is in contradiction with the promise of God in your life. What, what do you do when the covenant of God is in contradiction with the calling of God in your life? What do you do when the promise of God here it is, God promised Abraham that, that there would be a nation that would come from the loins of Abraham and, and, and now it's in contradiction with his present reality. How could a nation come forth when there is no Isaac? How, hallelujah, could a nation come forth when the, the heir of the promise is now going to be cut off? This word appears to be a contradiction to the covenant that God made with Abraham in chapter 21. And on today, Abraham helps us to understand how to bring some meaning to the interruptions in life that just don't make sense. And I don't know about you, but I experience Brother Mitchell, my fair share of interruptions in life. Minister Dawson, hallelujah, that sometimes life just don't make sense. Abraham helps us to understand how to carry out life when there is a contradiction to the covenant of God and it's brought about, here it is, by God. I could see if there was a contradiction in life and it was because of something I did. Amen, somebody. I could see if there was a contradiction in life and it was brought about because of something I did to somebody some time ago. I could, I could, I could live with it, Sister Lisa, if the contradiction was brought on by something, hallelujah, bad that I had done. But in the text, Abraham had not done anything bad, hallelujah, and God sends a contradiction in his life. Hallelujah. So he comes today, hallelujah, to help us understand, hallelujah, how to deal with contradictions and interruptions 
that happen in our life. Abraham helps us to understand how to operate in life when there is a puncture in the plans and it doesn't align with the promises of God. He helps us to understand how to operate in life when life seems to be filled with contradiction. In verse 1, the first thing Abraham lets us and helps us to understand when life is filled with contradiction is that you got to keep your commitment to the call. It's right there in the text. The first thing that I noticed in the text is that Abraham answers every time that God calls. Hallelujah. For somebody today in the midst of the contradictions of life and the interruptions of life, you must remain committed to the call of God. See, this wasn't the first time that God has called out to Abraham. Some suggest that this was the fourth time that God has called out to Abraham to walk by faith. And the reality of the situation is that every time that God called out to Abraham, that Abraham answered. Glory to your name. You got to stay committed to the call. This may not be the first time, but it appears to be the toughest test that God has called him to. For Abraham was called to leave home and to go to a place where God would show him, hallelujah, and somebody, hallelujah, would tell you that leaving home is tough enough. Amen. But it ain't like losing a child to your own hands. In spite of the situation, Abraham answers God's call each time when he has nothing and when he, when he has what appears to be everything, he still hears the voice of God. Hallelujah. You got to stay committed to the call. Hallelujah. Some of us, when, when we're doing well, here it is, we tune God out. Glory to your name, God. Some of us, when life is going well, we put God on hold. We, we say, let them wait. Some of us, hallelujah, in other words, become more important than God when life is going well and we don't have time for God. In fact, some of us tell our secretaries to make take a message and, and to hold all of my calls, but not Abraham. When, when God calls, Abraham says, here I am, which helps me to understand that Abraham didn't allow his stuff to stop him from hearing from God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abraham can still hear God's voice. Abraham didn't allow his status to stop him from hearing from God. In other words, he didn't become more important. Hallelujah. He didn't let other people, hallelujah, prop him up to make him believe that he was more than what he was. And, and now that he, hallelujah, has received the son, hallelujah, he didn't allow what he valued to control his action. Yeah, he didn't become possessed by what God has blessed him with. Even though he had peace in the land and with the people around him, he could still hear God's voice because some of us, when we get what we want from God, will listen to the blessing and stop listening to the blessor. Glory to your name, God. Even though, hallelujah, he is doing well financially, he can still hear God's voice. Because some of us, when we get, hallelujah, a dollar and fifty-nine cent a put up, hallelujah, our bills, hallelujah, we stop listening to God. Even though he has resources, he can still hear God's voice. He has servants and other resources that he could command others and tell them what to do with his resources. It did not stop Abraham from being committed to the call of God. Even though he's in a great situation, he can still hear God's voice. And somebody today, don't allow your great situation to drown out God's voice and make you stop hearing the voice of God. First thing that we see is that in the midst of contradictions, you must remain committed to the call of God. Hallelujah. The next thing that, that this text teaches me is that the call can sometimes present us with a contemporaneous crisis. Hallelujah. That means a right now crisis. Hallelujah. The text in verse 1 and 2 
says that Abra, God called out to Abraham that God did tempt. That word tempt means to test Abraham. God brought into Abraham's life a crisis that was right now. Yeah. He said, take now thy son. Hallelujah. It was a right now crisis that God brought into his life. The text says in verse 1 that God is testing Abraham. The word tempt or test used in the Hebrew is the word nasa. This word nasa has the idea of testing or proving the quality of someone or something. And here it is. It's often through adversity or hardship. It is the testing of someone by using adversity. Glory to your name, God. Here it is. You don't know what an adversity is. An adversity is a difficult or unpleasant situation. And so the text declares that God was testing Abraham by placing him in a difficult or unpleasant situation. Hallelujah. He says, take your son, your only son that you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountain that I will tell you to go. That creates, hallelujah, his, his right now crisis. Give up what you've waited for your whole life. That's a crisis. You do understand that Abraham, hallelujah, when he was 75, God called him, hallelujah, to go to a place. When he became 90 and 9 God told him that he would have a son. They waited and waited and waited for a son and now him and Sarai have a son and now God says take your son hallelujah and sacrifice him. Oh that's a crisis in life hallelujah and if you've ever been in a crisis in life, if you've ever had to sacrifice the very thing that you love, somebody today might feel what Abraham feels. Hallelujah. You're in a difficult or unpleasant situation and you can't understand what's going on. You're in a situation that is unpleasant and difficult and you don't know what to do. And you are asking yourself and you're asking God, what is the purpose and the intent? of this test. Hallelujah. God helps us by sharing that the intent of the situation is to refine our character that you might walk, hallelujah, more closely, hallelujah, in God's way. That, that God's intent when he brings the test into our lives is that we might walk more closely with God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That, that is God's intent, that, that, that when he brings the test into our lives, it is that we might walk more closely with God. Some thought they were close enough, but God says you can still get closer. Some thought they had reached the apex of his presence, but God sends a test to let you know and to let me know, hallelujah, to your name, God. That, that you are just scratching the surface of your relationship with God. Some thought they had reached the pinnacle of his person. And God lets us know that, that we still are on the periphery with God. And we ain't quite made it into the fullness of the Lord. In other words, there is more God and there is more to God than you think. And God sends a test that you might learn more about who he is and how he operates. God wants to share more about himself with you and me. God is providing the test, hallelujah, in this season that he might get you to a place where you don't waver, hallelujah, in spite of the difficult situation. And in this season of faith, don't be surprised if your faith is tested. 
Don't be surprised if you find yourself in a situation that looks too big for you. Don't be surprised if you find yourself in a place that is too big for you to handle by yourself. Don't be surprised if you find yourself in a fight that's too big for you. All it simply means for somebody today is that God is testing your faith. Don't be surprised if you find yourself with more plans than patience. God is testing your faith. Don't be surprised if you find yourself with more vision than customers. God is simply testing your faith. Don't be surprised if you find yourself in business with more space than people. God is simply Testing your faith. Don't be surprised when God asks you to do something that don't make sense. Hallelujah. When God asks you to do something like he asked Abraham to do something that don't make sense. All God is trying to do is to test your faith. Hallelujah. It don't make sense in the natural Hallelujah. Somebody said it don't make sense in the spiritual. Don't be surprised in this season if God tells you to do something that don't make sense. In fact, James helps us. James chapter 1, Sister Paul and James says, Count it all joy. Hallelujah. When you fall into divers' temptation, knowing this, that the testing of your faith it will work patience. And then he says, and let patience have its perfect work. Hallelujah. In other words, when you find yourself surrounded by the test of God, God is saying that you got to hold on to your faith. Is there anybody here that's going to hold on to your faith? I know it looks big and bad, but you got to hold on to your faith. I know you don't understand what it is that you're going through, but you got to hold on to your faith. Hallelujah. And count it what James says. All joy. Here is how I can count it. All joy. Because I can under, hallelujah, go to God. Hallelujah. And he says, if any of you lack wisdom, you don't understand what it is that you're going through. You lack wisdom. All you got to do is call on the name of the Lord. And if you ask God, the Bible says that he will give you wisdom to help you understand what's going on in your situation. Maybe it's just me that's going through some stuff and I don't seem to understand what God is doing. Hallelujah. Uh, but I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Is there anybody here that's going to keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand? Even when you don't understand why life, hallelujah, is difficult and why life is unpleasant, James shares with us that all you got to do is ask God what's going on in your life. And when you ask God, here it is, without wavering, because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. But I thank God that I can call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And God, I will stay committed to the call of God even in the midst of my crisis. That's right now. And oh my God, I'm going to stay committed to what God has called me to do. So I'm not going to wait away from the Lord I'm going to stay committed to what God has called me I'm going to have faith is there anybody here that's going to hold on to your faith in the midst of what you're going through if you're going to hold on to your faith then you're just like Abraham look at verse 3 in spite of his contradiction, 
Hallelujah. And so just like Abraham, somebody today ought to thank God for your interruption. Hallelujah. You ought to thank God. Thank God for your interruption. You ought to thank God for your interruption. Help them to hear your voice, O oh God. 
is a call that is on their life. Not only to hear it, but to heed it, God, to go and to do what you called them to do. We pray now, oh God, that you would keep them by your word, cover them by your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise on today. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for what you've done on today. Now is the time for sowing of seeds. Now is the time of sowing of seeds. I'm going to ask that you would get your seed in your hand and lift it high. Get your seed in your hand, lift it high. Amen. And then repeat after me. This is my seed. I did not deserve it. But God so graciously provided it unto me. Therefore, I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed, I will sow my seed in obedience to God's word and in expectation of a harvest. 100% obedience to God, 100% obedience to tithing, 100% faith. Amen. All throughout the sanctuary, want to sow your seed. We are progressive. We sow both spiritual seeds and physical seeds. I dare you to name your spiritual seed. Mine is faith. Amen. Those watching by way of social media, even those in the sanctuary, you can go to uh, uh, the Cash app and sow your seed. The Cash app is PCC Gary. Dollar sign PCC Gary. Dollar sign PCC Gary. You can send your seed through the mail, we call it snail mail, the 201 East Fifth Avenue, Gary, Indiana, 46402. Won't you be so kind as to sow your seed, amen? Amen, amen, amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, I will, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. a.m. tomorrow, 10 o'clock a.m. tomorrow, we're going to start with the church, amen? amen, amen, we have some greens that are out in the in the farm, and uh, we're making them at no cost, amen, starting at 10 o'clock on tomorrow, all the way through Wednesday, between now and Wednesday, once that happens, and we still have more, we're going to open it up to the general public, amen, 
Amen. So church, if you are in need of greens and you want to cook them and, and then freeze them and then call me over and say, Pastor, I got some greens. Amen. Amen. You can do that. Amen. But we'll have them available. Just see Sister Frida when you get here uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Amen. 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 I want to say thank you. Uh, uh, I have been, I've gotten a lot of texts and a lot of calls from people um, uh, because I haven't been in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. God is doing a new thing. Some of you may not know it, but in September, I, I had COVID-19. Amen. I was, I had, uh, was diagnosed as positive. And so I didn't want to come to church and in, impact or infect anybody else. Amen. Amen. I used wisdom and I stayed home. Amen. Amen. I didn't want to come up to the sanctuary to do that. And then over the last two weeks, uh, you know, when, when, and, and here it is. Uh, God healed me. Amen. Amen. I didn't take no medicine. Amen. I didn't go to no hospital. Amen. God miraculously healed me. Amen. And I'm so thankful. But as I was sitting there, God, uh, uh, I started to reevaluate life. Amen. Because a lot of people ain't making it. Amen. 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 My, my grandmother just succumbed and made her transition because of COVID. There are a lot of folk who ain't making it. Amen. Amen. But God saved me, amen? amen, and he allowed me to say, you got to take life into perspective, amen, amen, and so I've been missing my son's football games, and so I took life in perspective the last two weeks, amen, amen, because God said family is first, amen, amen, and so I took life into perspective, because that's what happens when, when things like that happen, you take life into perspective, amen. So last weekend, my son, he scored both touchdowns, CJ, and they won the state championship in football. Amen. Y'all ain't got to be proud about it. I don't know. That boy ran that ball and it wasn't nobody's business. And I was there to witness it. Amen. We don't know when God's going to call us home. Amen. Amen. I ain't asking for God to call me home, but I don't know when. Amen. None of us know when God's going to call us home. One thing you know, you got to be ready. Amen. What does it mean to be ready? You got to have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. My grandmother would say it this way. God ain't nothing but time and time ain't nothing but God. So you got to be ready. Amen. When God calls you to come home. Amen. And you got to do what God called you to do while you're here. Amen. It ain't just to, 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 to accept Jesus Christ and then sit down. Amen. It's to get to work. You don't work because, hallelujah, uh, 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 for your faith. You work because God gave you faith. Amen. Amen. You don't work to be saved. You work because God saved you. Amen. And so God is calling us to work. And so you might uh, see me miss some more Sundays. Amen. Amen. Because God is sharing. God is doing a new thing. That's all I'm trying to get you to see. There was a lot of ministry on the football field. Amen. There were a lot of parents that didn't know Jesus Christ. Amen. In fact, there was some folk last Sunday in crisis, and I was there to pray with them. Amen. Because God, God is calling us out of the sanctuary. Amen. That's why they keep clamping down. Gary just clamped down again, starting tomorrow. No more than 50 people or something like that can gather. 25, 50, I don't know the number. But, that, that, but when God allows something like this to happen, and we got to be listening to what God is calling us to do. Amen. Amen. And I'm listening to God. And so you ain't got to call me. I thank you for the calls. Amen. Pastor, how you doing? I'm good. <laughs> Amen. But it's a new season. Amen. It's a new season in ministry. In fact, God, uh, I sent somebody here from Bloomington, Indiana, all the way to Gary to see what we're doing. Amen. Took a four-hour trip just to come and see what we're doing here in Gary. Amen. Then said, I'm going to go back to my church and figure out how we can help you all. 
Amen. And then somebody else called from Indianapolis. I had heard from the Bowlings in at least five to six years. He sent me a text out of the blue. It wasn't out of the blue because God knew he was going to send it. He said, man, I'm doing, I'm doing economic development all over the country. And I want you to help me with it. I want you to help me with churches to understand what you all are doing here. How we can help them do that where they are all around the country. God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Shame on us if we're not open to hear, like Abraham, what God is calling us to do in this season. That takes faith. Amen. Amen. It takes faith to step out and to walk out and to go and to do. Because oftentimes we hear the negative. Why are you doing that? And the negative holds us back. But the devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, we move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody, I don't know who I'm giving the mic to, but uh, Sister Dog, be in his dog this year. Amen. Grab a mic from over there. Make sure you wipe it down and all that good stuff. But she wiped them already. Okay. Amen. Amen. Put something together and I want you to come. And the 
little sister said, she always like that. I said, that's okay. She just looking out for you. She don't want nothing to go wrong in your life. But that's what it's about, church. We're a community church. God has called us into this community. And I believe he's called us, he said, in uh, Jerusalem and to Judea to Samaria and into the othermost parts of the world. That's what uh, Acts 1 and 8 says. And I believe this is our Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. This is our Judea where God is calling us to Samaria and into the other parts of the world. That's why we're an international ministry. Amen. Because God is taking us. God is moving us. And God is showing us what we can do. Some may say uh, we small, amen, and all of those kind of things, but we got a, a mega ministry, amen, amen. It don't take a whole lot, because too many cooks, y'all know the words, for the broth, amen. You can't have too many people that stirring up the pot, amen, and get mad at each other because of the color of the spoon, amen, amen. But thank you all. Come on, Deacon. Okay. Amen. Amen. There's some refreshments in the back. Amen. That you can take home with you. Amen. But thanks again, each of you, from my wife, my Pastor Sean. Again, she's with CJ. They had a ceremony today uh, at noon uh, to celebrate uh, the eight. He played on that Gary Steelers eight U team. And he's gonna get a trophy today. He was probably, if they had an MVP, he was probably the MVP. <laughs> Last week he scored two touchdowns. The week before that he scored four. The week before that he scored three. And so he just loves it, and I love it for him. Amen. Amen. If our hearts and minds are one accord, let us stand. Again, thank you, everyone. People don't have to be kind and nice to you. Amen. And when they are, you ought to say thank you. And so I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you have done for my family and I through these eight. Uh, and on Christmas, it'll be nine years. These are uh, nine years. So thank you. Amen. Let the church. Let the church say amen, God. So let the church say amen. Most gracious God, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you, O oh God, for showing us what radical faith looks like, for helping us to understand that we can conquer whatever contradictions find their ways into our life. We thank you, O oh God, for the interruptions that you bring into our lives. We thank you, God, that when we have contradictions that we can stay committed to the call that's on our life, that, Lord, that when you send the crisis, O oh God, that we can still have confidence in you, knowing, O oh Lord, my God, that you're going to see us through no matter what it is that we may find ourselves, where we may find ourselves in life. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.